Let me start again for the sake of the recording. Good morning, church. Still alive? It's a great day to be alive in the name of Jesus. It's a great time to stand together in the kingdom of God. We know that the days are getting harder, but we know the kingdom of God is advancing. Amen? We were called for days like this. This is what the time that Jesus was facing the last few hours of his life on earth and darkness was standing against him. He started to pray and one of his prayers was, I came for a time as this. And let me tell you in Jesus' name, you came for a time as this. Amen? I want to encourage you in Jesus' name. I want to shake you this morning in Jesus' name. I really believe in the things that we sing, in the things that we pray, in the things that we preach. There is a song that we sing in this church that says, there is an army rising up and we need to learn how to behave as an army rising up. Amen. So shake your body this morning, Jesus. I am a soldier. Say, I am a soldier in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We need to learn how to stand in times like this. It's very easy for the devil to throw things on us and at us. And sometimes because we are part of a generation that likes to victimize themselves, sometimes we embrace the same spirit to understand that we are also victims. But let me tell you, you are not a victim. Amen. Christ is not a victim. He is the one that is established in the way that things are going to be done. So if you are in Christ Jesus, you need to learn also that you are the ones that carry the keys to establish new things. There is a truth that sometimes you don't grasp. In John chapter 14 says that Jesus has called us to be in him. And he said, as I am in, in, in my father, you are in me. If Christ is in the father, and we are in him. Where are we? In the Father too. Amen. So we are part. We have been invited to be part of God's kingdom. Amen. And let me tell you. The kingdom of God never loses. He never loses a battle. Amen. He never loses a war. I came here to shake to say you are a more than conquer in Jesus' name. We can see a light and man shadow. In the midst of the darkness, in the midst of the bad day, let me tell you, we can see a light. Amen. And not just because there is a light in the end of the tunnel, because sometimes we believe there is a light in the end of the tunnel. Let me tell you, the light is inside of you through the life of Christ Jesus. Amen. I don't think you grasp it. Sometimes you are looking for a light in the end of the tunnel when the light is inside of us. The Bible says that as we are born again, we will receive the word of the Lord. And the Bible says that from within us, we will spring up living water. Hallelujah. Living water. Hallelujah. Water that can cleanse, can clean, can wash can move in Jesus' name. Amen. I need to carry on in the series that we started last week. I really believe God has reminded us as a local church that it's time to go back to the basics. And when these scribes of the law, they came to Jesus and he said, what are, or what is the most important commandment? And he says, hear your God. Hear, hear, hear Israel. God is one. He is one Lord. Love your God above everything. With all your heart. With all your soul, with your strength. And with all your mind. 
give it fully to him. And the second is love your neighbor as you love yourself. And last week we spoke about loving God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, all your mind. Today we're going to spend some time in loving our neighbors. Amen. Are you ready for that? Because loving your neighbor probably can be more challenged than loving God. And to be fair honest, I really believe that loving God depends on how we love our neighbors. The Bible says, how can you love a God that you don't see if you don't love your neighbor, your brother that you see? The major thing here where I want to start is to break the knowledge on the sense of understanding that my neighbor is just the brother that I love. The neighbor is the sister that I love. But the neighbor doesn't have an identity until we meet him. It can be your beloved wife in her times of need, but also can be your, the most annoying neighbor you have on the neighborhood. In fact, the Bible says, love your enemy. Another day, Brother Andy was sharing something in our group. You know, the thing is, sometimes we are not able to love our enemies because you don't think as them with the possibility that they are our brothers for whom the Lord has given his own life to. When I look into the robber, when I look into the prostitute, when I look to the broken one, when I look to the beggar, when I look to the very annoying neighbor, I don't see him as somebody that the Lord has paid a price to. When the Bible calls us to love our neighbors and to love our enemies, we need to consider that my enemy today can be my brother of tomorrow because he has already been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? Challenge, isn't it? Because you have people that it's not easy to love. Let me start saying that we live among a generation of consumers and they build the expectation on others. For the good and for the bad. They're always expecting somebody else to come with the answers and somebody else to be blamed on their place. We live with a generation that doesn't take full responsibility for who they are and the results of their actions. We blame the system. We blame the parents. We blame the place we are born. We blame the society that we are part of. We blame the governors. But we never take full responsibility. And sometimes I wonder how much this virus in our society of being expecting and not being people that take responsibility can sometimes interfere in the way that we leave church. Because sometimes look to me that we arrive in this place full of expectation, not on the Lord, but also in people. We arrive here as if you're not part of something, as if you're not part of the kingdom, and if as we are not responsible for that too. We arrive here expecting that somebody else has prepared or have prepared the teas, the coffees, the music, the preaching, the chairs, and when the things start to happen, I'm there waiting for somebody else to deliver something over my life. And there I am, waiting for somebody to pray for me. 
I understand a moment that we are in our needs and this is the right place to be. But my question here is, if we're going to fulfill the second commandment that Jesus said that was the most important, first of all, loving God above everything, and secondly, love your neighbor as love yourself, how are we going to love being a generation of receivers? Love has to do with becoming a giver. Amen? Because God loved the world so much, He gave His Son to die for those who believe in Him and they will not perish. Love has to do with myself giving what I have and what I am to those that I believe I should love. And who I should love? My neighbors. Who are my neighbors? The one that God is going to place in front of me every single day of my life. For some of you, right now, the challenge is to love your children. Sometimes it gets harder. As they grow, it gets harder because they become not the friendly little baby that you carried for nine months in your womb. Sometimes they become the enemy number uno, one at home. They are the ones that are going to challenge you. They are the ones that are going to make the most hard questions. They are the ones that are going to put their fingers in your face and tell you what you're not doing right. I am talking rubbish here. Older they become, harder becomes to love. But the Bible says, love your neighbor. Maybe it can be the spouse that one day was the boyfriend or the girlfriend that I loved so much, passionate about. Driving hours to see her, waiting to see him. Buying the best clothes to go to her house, to bring flowers to her and to the mother-in-law too. We are trying to impress because we love so much. Words like, you are the love of my life. I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Do you remember those days? I just wonder if they still look like the same today. The gentleman that was fit has grown a belly. Ex experience, we call that. The beautiful young girl that used to run as a gazelle, the hair is all over the place, and jumping her smell is so good, and the teeth, and suddenly you arrive and she's there looking after your kid, but she doesn't look as good as you used to. And there you are, not just because of this physical attraction, but now the pressures of the day-to-day -day life, doesn't matter how beautiful she's still, the pressure of the day makes us all to look ugly. I am speaking rubbish here. On those days that you prefer or rather to stay a few minutes longer outside. I hope it was not time yet to go home because I know when I come home something will not work. But the chant is, love your neighbor as you love yourself. It's easy to think about those who are out there broken, that they can give them a little bit of food. But sometimes you need to think about those who are here that they have a struggle with. Let me tell you, it's easier to love the poor young guy out there that when I give a plate of food, they feel satisfied. Hard is to love the ones that are very close to you, that sometimes they don't respond in the way that you're expecting. But let me tell you, we have a crisis in our generation because we don't live by faith. We don't live by understanding. We live by expectation. And let me make a statement here that if you're not right, write it because it's going to be important in your life. Your frustrations, they are a fruit of the wrong expectations that you build. We build expectations on people, don't we? Despite what they can give or not, we build expectations on them. 
despite of who they are and how they are built and about their capability. We see people, they come close and it's, it's straight we build an expectation on them. Why do we get frustrated with people? Because we believe they should respond better. Isn't it? I never get frustrated with somebody that I didn't expect anything from. I don't get uh, frustrated with my neighbor that is three doors far from me. To whom, and be honest here, to whom you get more frustrated with in daily basis. You don't need to respond because maybe he is in your side. Don't say that. <laughs> I don't get frustrated with the next road neighbor. I don't expect anything from him. But with the brothers and the sisters of my church that I come every Sunday, I start to build expectations on them and suddenly, boom! They are not able to respond. And it doesn't matter why. There I am frustrated. And because my love is not the love of God that depends on how they behave, now because they have behaved badly in my own understanding, now I cannot love them anymore. But the Bible says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. You don't think about yourself like that when you fail. We all are looking for the second chance. And I, you don't even know when the second chance comes from. Because I have gone after the second chance many years ago. It's the third and it's the fourth and the fifth. We are all looking for another opportunity. And let me tell you, this is called grace. Let no one in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 24 says, let no one seek his own good, but the good of who? Huh? Let no one seek on his own good, but good of his neighbor. It is Bible. <laughs> it's very hard to respond to this call when we have in a very self generation. It's also important to remember to love your neighbor as yourself, which means you need to see the love God has for you first. That Jesus died for you in order for you to be freed from sins and become the person God intended. Get it in Jesus' name. The commandment is love God above everything. But love your neighbors, you love yourself. We need to start from ourselves. He has died to free you and to allow you to become the person that he intended for you to become. For if you don't realize all the sacrifice God has made for you, how can you love others in the same way he has loved you? Brothers, we've been called for freedom. But not only to use our freedom, and this is in Galatians chapter 5, 13 to 14. We've been called for freedom. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. But to love, serve whom? Galatians chapter 5, 13. Eh? Serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. Which word is that? Is it here? You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. I'm just trying to give you the background of this preaching because sometimes we believe it was said just once, but it's all over the Bible. John chapter 14, 34 and 35 says, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You are so out to love one another. But this, all people will know that you are 
by this all people know that you are my disciples if you have love one another Hebrews chapter 13 from verse 1 to 3 says let brotherly love continue do not neglect to show hospitality to a stranger Let me go deeper here because sometimes it's easier to love my brother because I know him. But the Bible is saying, love, let, what says? Let brotherly love continue. So he's talking about a specific love, eh? Amen? A brother, that, a love that they have for Andy that is here with me every single Sunday and Thursday and we pray together and he helps me when I need and I'm here to support him. We have a brotherly love. Amen? Here among the ones that we know, we have brotherly love. But the Bible says, let this love to continue. Do not neglect to show hospital to whom? So what the Bible is saying, that the same love that you have for one another here, I also need to extend for those that we don't know yet. Amen. It's challenging it. Again, I'm talking to believers. Another Sunday, I'm preaching to the believers. Last week, I was challenging you to love God above everything, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Today, I'm saying, we need to stand to understand the love of God because we need to love our neighbors and not just ourselves here. Is this just love? Brother Miguel, a songwriter, a professional musician, it's part of our band that's here every Sunday to serve us. We love him. Isn't it? I was a sinner. Wow, one day, one day. Is this to love this kind of people? Is this to see, touch Ricardo there and say, wow, these people, they serve us so well. We love them. But let me tell you, the Bible says, let this love you have here not to stop. Let it continue and be extended to the stranger. Ah. A stranger can be called mother-in-law, okay? Can be the neighbor that we don't go well with. But also can be every single one that God places in our past. Every single one that comes through that door. Let me tell you, we have a commitment and a commandment over us that we should love every neighbor God sent through that door. And we are committed to be a church that to embrace every single one that comes through. We don't embrace their sin, but embrace them. We don't embrace their mistakes, but embrace them. We don't embrace the demons they're going to bring, but we're going to embrace them and rebuke the devil from their lives. Why? Because we love them. Wow, this person, that person doesn't fit, fit here or is not the nice person, is a bit to this, is a bit to that. Let me tell you, you have a call to love as God loved you. Unless any of us stand here and say, I am loved by God because I deserve. If you can stand here and say that, they will say, wow. But the Bible says that we all have sinned and we, we all came short of his glory. So we all deserve, sorry, we all deserve to be punished. But he came because he loved. He says more in this Bible verse. Remember those who are in prison. Are thou in prison with them? Remember those in prison as if you are there with them. We spoke a few months ago about compassion, didn't we? The compassion is more than just to be merciful. Sometimes mercy is a movement in my heart, but compassion is the movement of my whole being towards and to do something for. Hallelujah. Sometimes we are very good to feel from our sofas the hunger of somebody else somewhere else. 
or we're not good to move ourselves from where we are towards their need and their pit. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Matthew 25, 35 to 40 says, and this is a definition how God sees. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick, I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you drink? When did you see you as a stranger and welcome you? Or naked and clothe you? And when did you see you sick or in a prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these my brothers, you did to me. Sometimes you don't know how to love. And if we look for supernatural ways, supernatural ways to love people. But sometimes love starts in the simplicity of to do what I can do right now for you. Sometimes I'm looking for this big concept of how can I love this person. Let me tell you as you see their needs answer in Jesus' name. Jesus first teaches us that the greatest of all commandments should love God with all our hearts. With all or the whole being. Because God is the foundation of love. It is only by loving God that you truly learn how to love. Right away, right away Christ follows it up with loving your neighbor as love yourself, because once we put God at the center of our lives, we learn how it is to genuinely to do the same for our neighbors. Do you remember last week when we shared that one of the meaning of love is to place the ones that we love above? And we learn also that love is this strong understanding in our minds, and a strong compassion in our hearts. So there is no way to love if you don't think about. So in Jesus' name, I just am trying to bring the concept here and the call of God for all of us to understand that, first of all, we need to understand that God has loved us first. Amen? Because if we don't understand He has paid the high price, to take us away from the rubbish that we were at and brought us to an environment where now we can be called children of God. Empowered. People, they have thrown rubbish at you. They have said that you cannot do. They have said that you are not enough. But God has come and said, I love you in a such way that I'm going to send my only son because I want to make you not just a creation, but I'm going to make you my child. You are my child. I am here with you. And more than my child, you're going to be one with me. You're going to be a living relationship. You and I as one. So let me tell you something that you're going to maybe simplify this message. I'm going to speak about some ways that you can love and manifest love to our neighbors. The first one is this one that I'm talking about. We need to understand that we are loved. Because if you don't understand that you are loved, you're always going to be insecure to love somebody else. People that are insecure in themselves, they cannot love somebody else. They will try, but they can't because they're always going to be comparing themselves. People that they don't understand that they love, sometimes they will try to please people, but to please people doesn't mean that you're loving them. Sometimes you're not able to have an honest love because you're insecure on our own selves. We don't know that we are loved. 
So my love is always to try to please people because I don't want to be left behind by them. Did it make sense here? I don't know, but maybe some of you have been in your life in a toxic relationship. What's a toxic relationship? Somebody loving a lot but very secure with somebody else that doesn't love, doesn't care, but is very secure. So the abuser is going to do whatever he wants with you because you don't love yourself, you're not secure in yourself, but because you believe he's the only person that can care for you, you're going to go through the abuse without him letting him go. Why? Because you're insecure. You don't know that you're loved by God or by somebody else. So you allow, you allow yourself to be abused. Do I make sense here? When I don't understand I'm loved, I beg. And how can I give what I don't have? So the first step to love your neighbor is to understand that God has loved you first. I don't know how you feel about yourself this morning, but let me tell you, despite all the hardship, despite all the mess that has been part of your life, or maybe you are in today, let me tell you, God loves you. And he has sent his son to die for you. All the mess, all the mistakes, all the sin, let me tell you, being paid for. Being paid for. Hallelujah, put your hands together, being paid for. He loved you even when you are enemies of him. Hey, Manic, you didn't need to come before he loved you. Hey, Merado, you don't need to change before he loves you. The Bible says he loved us while we're still enemies of him. Why? Because he's secure about himself. Because I am insecure sometimes, I don't know, and I'm going to choose whoever I'm going to love because I'm not sure about myself. How can I be sure about yourself? Ephesians chapter 3, 17, 19 says, So that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith, that you have been rooted and grounded in love. This is who you are. This is who you are. You are rooted and grounded in love. You are love. May have the strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth and how the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. This is the first step to follow the, 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 first, the second commandment. You need to understand that God has grounded you in love, has rooted in love. You will not be shaken from love because you are rooted in love. Now, based in this love by faith, now we can live with all the saints and have the full comprehension of what God is. Without understanding He loves you, He will never understand who He is. Hallelujah. It's true being rooted in love, in faith, now we can together with the brothers and sisters, we can come to know Him in fullness, to comprehend. Because I'm loved, now I can love. And the first way that I can love is to show grace. Right now, if you want to do something there. Love your neighbor means showing grace. What is grace? The undeserved? Grace is the undeserved gift. Amen? Grace is grace because we didn't deserve and he gave us anyway. Amen? Nobody is saved by deeds. Nobody conquers the heart of the Lord by what you can do. First of all, he loved you. Amen? And grace is the way that God has loved you first. 
You didn't deserve. I didn't deserve. But he loved me. Now grace and through grace, I have the power to be transformed. Amen. But he loved me before I was transformed. Amen. When I say to you that the first way to love people is a love grace is don't wait for your neighbor to deserve for you to love him. Sometimes you are waiting for somebody to gain a heart for us to love them. It's not the way that we learn. We wait for my neighbor to prove that he's good so I can call him my brother. I wonder when the church, the church decides to call me brother. As a young man come to church with all the silliness Religion will say, I'm going to give you a time. You fulfill the doctrines of the church. If you fulfill the way that I dress, if you fulfill the way that we sing, if you fulfill the way that we smell, if you fulfill the way that we eat, after that, you're going to do a little test and you're going to bring you to the membership of the church and so you can call you a brother. Isn't it? Religious way. Let me tell you, grace has foreseen even before I was not. God called me even before I loved him. The first way if you write down is show grace and love in grace and through grace. Romans 5 5 to 10. And hope does not put us to shame. Because God has been purified in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the time Christ died for the ungodly. For whom God died? Hallelujah. For one scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God showed his love for us in that while we were still. Christ died for us since therefore we have now been justified by his blood. Much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For while we still enemies we are called to reconciliation. Do you understand the God of God, the love of God goes beyond we can make any movement. But if you are rooted in the love of God, this is the way you should love people. Don't wait for people to prove they deserve your love. Love them in Jesus' name. The second way, love your neighbor means serving them. Christ himself came and showed that he was here to serve us. Kindness is an attribute in 1 Corinthians 13 that is an attribute of God and this is how we should live. Matthew 20, 28 says God came to serve. Serve one another in Jesus' name. Do not miss an opportunity to serve your brothers in Jesus' name. You want to serve your neighbor, serve him. You want to serve, love the homeless, serve the homeless. Last Friday we have a couple of homeless that came to our prayer meeting. And even before I was considered to pray for them, my heart was desperate to give them some food. And praise God because we managed to find food and people that were able to warm up some food for them there in the center. And that reminds me about the core of this church. That is to give food to the hungry. And I really pray that one day we're going to have a place that constantly we can pray and we can feed the hungry. Sometimes people, they say, do you long? Do you want to have a building? Of course I want to have a building. Not just for the sake of Sunday mornings, because I can have Sunday mornings whenever, wherever. But it's for the sake of those who don't have a place to have a plate of food. For those that don't have a place to go and find 
clothing to be clothed. When I pray and I see our building, I see more than just the theater that you're going to worship God. I see a place where the broken and the wounded, they can come and call this place a home. What's the point you have? Our building there in the most busy roads in our, in our town, if you're not open to receive the broken and wounded, what about to have a beautiful scent that's closed every single day. What's the point to have a Sunday morning building if it's not to say this is the house of your father and the house of my father has many places. And I know the Bible is talking about the future but also we are here to represent and to manifest prophetically what heaven is about. So do not run from serving people. Loving your neighbor means also acting with compassion. I will not go deep in any of this today, but compassion is the act that moves our heart, not just in feelings, but in actions. We like to feel sorry for people, don't we? But how many steps we take towards these people? Let me bring here a story, it's a true story. Many, many years ago, in America, there was a seminary, and there was a lady that she was talking. She is an activist, and she's a pro life activist. And she was giving her a speech on this seminary, on this big place that was host, hosting an event for thousands of people. And now she was sharing about the experiences that she had and talking about her understanding about being a pro-life and abortion and stuff like that. She could see a old gentleman in tears, through the whole meeting, this gentleman was crying. This old gentleman crying. And she couldn't cool, fully comprehend why an old gentleman was crying when she was being an activist, pro-life, and the most of the people there were new people, students. And, and she was speaking and speaking, and the gentleman was crying through the whole meeting. In the end, she, could, she couldn't hold herself. She finished, she left the platform, the event has finished and she woke towards this old gentleman. And she asked, you know what, I'm sorry, but I saw you crying out through the whole seminary. How can I help you? Anything going on in your life? And he said, let me tell you my story. I was born in Germany many, many, many years ago. And I was part of a little church that was built by or very close to the train tracks. In the 40s, we start to hear a train that was running or passing by in our Sunday morning that was not something that you're used to. And that train just came and we just heard, choo, 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 choo. And it was very strange because with the train I also heard some shouting, but we couldn't grasp. The next Sunday was the same. At the same time, as you we are singing, and some of us, we paid attention a little bit more, and suddenly we start to realize there was some shouting of people asking for help. Desperation coming from the train. The third Sunday was the same, but now we paid attention, realized people in desperation asking, for help. We knew because of the news, now we knew what was going on. We knew that those people were in trouble. We knew that those people were going to a destiny of death. And the next Sunday, on the fifth Sunday, the train is coming, and we realize the train is coming, 
And instead of paying attention, now we start to sing. And as the train was coming closer, we start to sing louder. And the train was coming closer, and we start to sing louder. And the train was closer, and we were singing louder. And this man was in tears. Even though he was a child, he couldn't understand the problem there. Sometimes, as church in this country or around the world, we see the crying out of people and instead of paying attention in what they are looking for, we sing louder. Not just on Sunday mornings, but in the way to live our lives. I don't want to know about what they are suffering about. I don't want to know what they are looking for. They are not my problem. How many times we saw a beggar on the streets and we just look on the other side. Let us be honest here. How many times we know that our brother or sister or our neighbor is struggling with something? What we do? We say, I am busy. I have lots to do. I am short in money. I cannot help. I start to sing loud my own circumstance that you will not allow me to hear their circumstance. Do I make sense here? My question is, how are we going to live our lives? We're going to keep singing louder in our own lives, we're going to stop to hear those who are struggling. The last three weeks in this town, we lost two people. One gentleman that I don't know him well, looks to me that he was a man that was doing well in business, is sponsoring two clubs, football clubs. Apparently had a beautiful family, three children. This is what are in the news. They are looking for him as somebody has been lost. Until they discovered train track. Maybe we have heard, maybe you've known this man. My question is, have you stopped to say and to ask, how are you doing? A couple of weeks ago, a 15 years old girl in this very town that doesn't live close, that, that doesn't live far, here, in Havers, this one we knew, she used to be my son's colleague when she was in nursery. Life gone until last week, she hung herself in her bedroom. My question is, how many of us we knew this girl through the day-to-day -day life? Did we sing louder? In a way that you couldn't hear these people crying out. And maybe you're saying, Pastor, I don't know these people. Maybe we didn't know them. But how many other people we know that they are on our side, they are by our side, and they are crying out and are able to say, how are you? I'm listening in your heart. I'm listening to your circumstance. Maybe something is going on. I can see from your heart something is crying out. I don't want to sing louder in my own ways, in my religion. Because somebody said, who are my neighbors? You said, there was a priest, there was a Levite, and there was a good Samaritan. Who are you? You are the one who's going to pass by singing louder? Or you are the one who's going to stop by and say, I can hear you. There are so many more things I could share from the Bible here, but let me tell you something here. My heart melts in desperation when I see something happening in my town. Because these are my people. New Life Church, let me make a statement here in Jesus' name. If you believe the only people that belong to New Life Church are the ones that gather here on Sunday, you are wrong and you are in the wrong church. This is the building we come on Sunday, but our chapel is our town. In Jesus' name. If you believe our families, they are just those who are around here, we are making a mistake and we are blind. Yes, first of all, we are committed to look after one another. But do not stop the brotherly love to move forward. 
as you walk on the streets, let me tell you the numbers of homeless is growing in this town. The numbers of divorces are growing in this town. The numbers of people living addicted is growing in this town. Do we love our neighbors? Let us stand up together in Jesus' name.